ouch. Ouch. Ah. Hey, guy. Yo, Rara. Welcome back. Or welcome to Spiritual Living Series. <sighs> Alright. Let me know if you actually made like an interesting uh, 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 intro because right now we're just going up the beat, you know what I'm saying? My food better not be cold. Okay, it's in a foil, so it shouldn't be. But remember when I said mukbang style? That's what we're gonna do. It's not like a bunch of food, but I'm gonna eat while I'm making this video. So I hope y'all like it. And I already ate a couple bites. Don't be mad at me. I'm so sorry. But go ahead, I'll give y'all a minute to grab, grab your drink, grab your food, grab your snack, grab anything edible, and shower down, okay? Not without me. Not playing. <laughs> All right, you know, before we get started, uh, my name is Araya Brown, a.k.a. Rye Rye, and I'm here to spread the word and the gospel and share my spiritual journey with you all. And hopefully, you are going through the spiritual journey with me. Here, if you're not, it's never too late to get started. I'm like, it's literally, like, literally, like, literally, like, literally too late. But we'll get to that. What I have here right now is Thai food from Sweet Rice, one of the great places. Uh, so far in hands down uh, in the Asian food uh, 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 culture. Um, I got combination rice. I don't know if I should do a thumbnail, but... By the way, my ring light broke. And I am so upset, because look at this. No laughing. To be honest, it's been going on strong for two or three years while me being on YouTube. By the way, go check out my video of me feel, feel like it's very entertaining over 100 views, you know. Anyways, but before I actually chow down, even though it, you know, I just taste tested that. We have to pray, okay? And if you don't know how to pray, just close your eyes and bow your head, okay? Lord God, thank you for this food that I'm about to receive, or that we're about to receive, and let me nourishment for our bodies to help for the future. And I pray for this episode that you will speak to me and through me, Lord God, as I speak to your people and your children, Lord God. And I pray, Lord God, that you'll be able to touch someone um, no matter if it's one to a hundred, Lord God, I pray, Lord God, that the life be delivered by this episode, if not the next. And I pray, Lord God, that we able to speak your word and your truth and speak my testimony through my spiritual journey that you have for me, because I know all things work for the good according to your purpose. In Jesus' name, let me pray for you. Amen. Let's get a couple bites in. Hold on. <laughs> this big old tomato, though, is mind blowing right here. <laughs> Mm, mm. Oh, and I have my Sprite, okay? Even though I'm 21, I want to keep it PG. You know what I'm saying? Yes, Lord. So what I'm using right now is this lamp light that I use for work. Okay? I'm keeping it right there. So, and that's what's happening right now, unfortunately. So everybody say RIP to ring light in the chat, bro. <gasps> okay. Mm. Mm. This shrimp is crazy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. The combination rice has a little bit of everything. It has. Oh, let me turn on my fan. Because the air conditioning in my room has failed me, so I have to make ends meet and use a fan in my room to circulate some type of air in here, okay? So I'm going to turn it down for you. Welcome to Spiritual Living, where we live by the spirit, and today you are watching episode four. If you want to watch previous episodes, check down the playlist down below or at the end of this video. And make sure you catch up with all of my episodes, because each episode is just as important as the other. Okay, I'm your host, Raya Brown. Let's get started. Okay, so the title of our episode is How to Use a Spiritual Filter. Okay, when we talk about spiritual filter, right, to my, my Bible scholars out there, what is spiritual filter anyway? While y'all answer that, I'm going to give you a bite. It starts with a D. Yes. So, well, we'll come back to that. Just think about it, do your research, and then we'll see if you get it right. So, we're going to talk about how to use a spiritual or positive filter. So I want to give y'all an example. So there was a time where when I go watch movies, I'm the type of person who watches the movie as a whole and watches it for what I expect from it. Most of the time for comfort, I watch kids movies because I am childish, no I'm, I'm a child at heart, all right? Well, they say kids fake, okay? 
childlike thing, all right? Anyways, when I watch a movie, right, I notice that after we finish watching the movie, let's say it's a Marvel movie, um, especially, actually, the movie called Th the Thor Love and Thunder, right? So that movie, right, walking out of that movie, that movie was horrible. It was disgraceful, it was horrible, uh, it was trash, right? Um, for whatever reasons he may have. So I watched it for myself. I watched it on Disney Plus. Do, 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 do. When I watched it, I enjoyed the ride. Um, the thing about it is, I think we discussed about it. Uh, when my dad watches, he expects the same type of level of the movie compared to the second Thor. Ragnarok? Yes. Thor Ragnarok. You know that? It's a pretty good movie. Very entertaining, action-packed, emotional. Um, the antagonist pretty good. Everything, right? But watching Love and Thunder, it's a different type of movie. Even though it's the same Thor movies. You know what I'm saying? Um, so they didn't like that. They didn't like how it was different. Um, how it's not as up to par they say as Ragnarok but when I watched it I enjoyed it and you won't let me tell you why because when I watched it you know the first five minutes first ten minutes you already know what type of movie you're gonna watch so I watched it for how it is and as watching it for how it is you know it has some you know some Marvel movies now they have more jokes than needed to be but I still liked it. I think the antagonist was good. I feel like, you know, the conflict, you know, it wasn't as great as I expected, but, you know, I still had a good time because they still had the chance to have serious moments. And that's what I like. I like things to have levels, like a splash of comedy, you know, with some serious parts and a little bit of drama in the middle, you know what I'm saying? And that's how I am for most movies. Because when I look, when I watch most movies, most movies it's hard for me to say that movie was trash. Because I give them, sometimes you can say the benefit of the doubt, but it's like you gotta watch it for what it is and what you probably would expect. Like everything, everywhere, all at once. When you watch that movie, literally based off the title, your title, you're supposed to expect everything, everywhere, all at once. And literally, that was the whole movie. And I when I understood that I understood I can I can have the chance to focus on everything else without being overwhelmed by what's going on in this movie and also focusing on the message by it too and so that's what I think was really cool to me um about how I watch movies and some of you may say man I ain't trying to if she ever requests a movie I ain't gonna watch it don't do that <laughs> don't do that don't have like that I know I know some good movies I'll tell you with good, of course, in my opinion, because every movie is subjective. Everybody likes what they like. So it's like, okay, if you want to go about it that way, cool. But, you know, why not give every movie a chance, you know? So with that example, I focus on all the good parts. But some others find a lot of bad parts and make it way more than the good. So that's why some of them called it a bad movie. But really, all I remember is the good stuff, and that weighs more than the bad parts in it. If there was any, I don't know. There was some parts that fall flat, but I was still able to enjoy the movie entirely. So, that being said, let's talk about discernment, right? So, spiritual discernment, discernment, it's basically like what's going on. Your your spirit is able to decipher and differentiate what's of God and what's not of God in simple, basic terms, right? So, for example, you go to church and you're supposed to be there to receive the word, but the pastor is kind of going off in different directions. That's when discernment kicks, kicks in. You're able to receive and identify what's godly and ungodly, what's of God and what's not of God, what's of the word of God and what's out of context, you know? But that happens when you really know the word of God, you know what I'm saying? 
in everywhere, you know? I'm not like a Bible scholar, but I re retain a lot of information from them. Um, and I did like a quiz one time where I was, they said I had the gift of it. Um, I didn't think it was a type of thing where you have to have a gift. I would assume everyone had it, but if it's a gift, then hey, you know, that's one of my gifts, you know? Cool stuff. Um, so let's talk about, let's define discernment biblically, right? Isaiah 11, 2, it says, And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Um, I would say in those terms, that's uh, pretty a pretty good synopsis of it. Yeah, to elaborate on that, it's basically when you see certain things in the media or you hear about certain things from other people, the gift of discernment is when the spirit can decipher the true motives, can identify the true motives of what's being told or received, you know? And with the spirit of discernment, for example, I'll show you an example of two people. A person without a spirit of discernment is a person that is able to be told a different things and be able to believe it. For example, so you know, there's some false prophets out there. I'm gonna be totally honest. A preacher preaches the word, but then flips it into his own understanding and tries to express one of his own beliefs and has put put himself into the word as like trying to manipulate it in some way. So that's false teaching. Like he's not really speaking the truth of the word of God. A person that doesn't have a spirit of discernment wouldn't be able to know that. They wouldn't be able to see that. They wouldn't be able to understand that what he's saying is not all the way true or is not of God. You know what I'm saying? He's like, but a person who has spirit of discernment, like for example, I'm able, sometimes when I go to church, right? I know when somebody is speaking for the flesh or speaking for the spirit. Cause I mean, I've been Christian all long enough to know, but also like I'm able to see that like, okay, he spoke from the flesh at that moment. But when he speaks the word, I can feel God speaking through him because the spirit can see another spirit, you know? And they can connect with another Holy Spirit. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like we're speaking the same language because we're all supposed to be rooted in God and the word is God. So we're supposed to be rooted in the word of God. You know what I'm saying? So, I'm sorry, I'm sweating. <laughs> but we're almost done. So, with that understanding is, please have people around you actually read your word, okay? Please read the word for yourself. I don't know how many times y'all heard it before, but it's true, okay? Read the word for yourself and let the Holy Spirit be able to receive what you need to receive out of it. Let God speak through you, okay, when you read the word. Then when you go out into the world, as people holding the Holy Spirit, we're not supposed to be of the world. So you should know that the difference between worldly things and godly things. And understand that people can be both. You know, there's, when it comes to having a relationship with God, you have to be able, when you're walking, for example, Christ is up there, right? When I'm walking to Christ and following Christ, and he's leading me through his footsteps, I have to set a good example of Christ-like faith. I'm walking towards him. As I'm walking towards him, I should be able to shed a lot of things that are of the flesh. I should shed lust. I should shed, you know, sexual immorality. I should shed um, cursing and all the other things, right? I should shed my sexuality of, you know, different things, you know what I'm saying? Um, I should shed my worldly beliefs about things. I should shed me believing in crystal. I should shed me believing in Big Bang Theory. I need, as I'm walking bold like to Christ, I need to let go of all that stuff or else I'm not gonna go anywhere towards Christ. And I want y'all to know when people tell you, because I've seen videos of it and I really wanna express this, but I'm expressing this with the love of my heart, okay? Because I'm telling y'all, when I say, I haven't eaten none of this food because I'm just, 
I love the Lord. <laughs> when I express, look, we, we getting bread by the word of God, okay? Not the food of the flesh. <laughs> Even though I am kind of hungry right now. But anyways, when you hear people say, oh, I can do this and be a Christian, or I can do this and preach the word, or I can do this and believe in God and have a relationship with God. <sighs> the thing about that is, it's not possible. Because the God I know personally, I have to let go of a lot of things. And when it comes to being Christ-like, Christ has to, take, has to make some sacrifices, okay? So do we, you know? We might have to suffer from it too. But when I tell you, after my suffering, I came back even stronger. It's like shedding skin and being reborn, okay? And we just got to understand about during these the last days, which I'll probably mention a lot through these next few episodes. When we're in the last days, we have to be able to grow a spirit of discernment. We have to be able to be strong in the foundation of the Word of God. Because we are literally in a war right now. Um, I don't know if you heard that song called Stand Out by Ty Tribbett. Um, literally, the, all of the lyrics are saying everything from like majority of it was from the word I already know cause cause he was like I'm, I'm gonna pull up the lyrics right now and then we're gonna head out when the enemy comes in like a flood the spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against him I see the enemy come in like a flood in our houses in our churches in our families but what I don't see is the standard keep oh God where's the standard at we in a war y'all it's time to stand out it's about to go down about to have to be gone. It's time for you to choose whose side you're going to be on. The devil is recruiting, tempting every man, but he's already defeated. All we have to do is stand. I have to sing through this because I'm not going to just break this. Ah, no time for mixing light. No, no time for mixing light with the darkness. That's what I mentioned. It's, it's either black or white. And to be Christ-like, Christ is the way, the truth, and the light. If we're going to be Christ-like, we got to be we gotta be the light. We gotta be the type of person where we walk into a room full of sinners and shed light into that room. You know? We can't mix. We can't be in a gray area, y'all. We can't be in a gray area, y'all. It's time. The last days, we gotta be able to choose. We have to be able to choose. It's time to choose. Are you gonna be all the way for Jesus where you will have to let go of your LGBT mindset, let go of your science and technology mindset, and literally just be full forth with the word of God, or you're going to have to be of the world. It's time to choose who you're going to be. Are you going to choose to be the child of God? Are you going to choose to be a child of the world? Or to be the slave of the world? It's up to y'all. But... Thank you so much for watching. Thank y'all for sticking with me. If y'all stick this far, if you did, like comment, comment, I don't know, thumbs up that yeah, you made it this far, okay? And I'm gonna I'm go like it, okay? Um, but thank y'all for so much for watching and staying tuned with me on on this word. Uh, I'll talk more about these lyrics probably in the next episode, but I pray. Let's pray right now. Lord God, I pray for your presence to pour onto us, to the viewers, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, for this person that is watching this video right now, for this specific viewer, that I pray, Lord God, that if they not, if they have not led their hearts to you, Lord God, I pray that they'll be encouraged by you, Lord God. And so I pray for all the believers that are dealing with spiritual warfare, that I pray, Lord God, that you would give them encouragement and strength, Lord God, as we are at a war at this season, Lord God, that I pray, Lord God, that, the, that we know that we, we already won. We just got to really fight our battles through you, Lord God. And I pray, Lord God, that we'll never be alone to you in Jesus' name. And I pray for the non-believer to repeat after me. Um, if you choose to walk in Christ, walk to Christ and have Christ-like faith. So, Lord God, I know that you died, that you rose on the third day. And I know that I am your child. And I believe that through salvation I am made free and by Jesus name I choose you and I 
let go of anything that's not of you. And I choose you as my Savior, Jesus Christ. And Lord God, thank you for the believer, uh, our new child of, our new sibling in Christ. And I pray, Lord God, that you'll be with them through their journey and that they understand that they don't have to be perfect to be your child, Lord God. And so I know heaven is rejoicing for them. And I thank you and praise you in your name. In Jesus' name, I do pray and thank you. Amen. Um, thank you all for sticking around. I pray you have a nice day, nice night, nice dinner. You know what I'm saying? And um, stay blessed. Okay? I love y'all. And yeah, stay blessed. All right, bye, y'all.